Well, thank you for uh, letting us play a little bit. Uh, I received a mandolin as a gift. Um, I didn't ask for it, really. I didn't even, I was, wasn't really even expecting it, but my wife got me a mandolin. And when I got it, I'm like, hey, that's cool. I, I, you know, I like that kind of music. Maybe I could learn to play it, and I couldn't. And so I just put it in the closet, and I never touched it. It just sat there. It wasn't this one. It was a different one. It was just collecting dust for so long. And then one night in the summer, I was down in a small little town in Arkansas, and we went to this outdoor park and we sat around and we listened to all these older people play their instruments and sing music and just something about that night and the live music and the community that was built around that circle kind of captured my attention I had this really awesome experience which made me want to become a mandolin player. I had received the mandolin as a gift, and when I went home, I actually got it out of the closet, and I thought, I wondered to myself, is there any way that I could learn to play uh, a mandolin and become a mandolinist? And... I didn't know. I really didn't. I'm, you know, I was 52 years old. That's, you know, kind of going down here, right? That's old. Uh, my hands had been brutalized. I played college football and dislocated my fingers and all this stuff so many different times. And so I thought, I can't even bend. If you look, I can't even bend my pinky. It's like stuck. And it's just because it was, you know, it's just been. So I'm thinking to myself, there is no way that I can learn. But what if I did? I, I wanted to because this experience that I had motivated me to pick up the instrument that was given to me as a gift and began to practice. Because it really, you could say, was kind of a worthless gift up until that point. I didn't use it. But I decided, what could I do if, hey, every, 10 minutes a day, at least 10 minutes a day, I started playing on this thing and learning it. So I got, you know, YouTube is beautiful. I got all these YouTube free, you know, videos. And I would watch the video and I would try to learn the chords and I would play it. It was really sounded terrible. I apologize to my wife who's here in the room and all my kids and neighbors and dogs and everything else because it was not a pleasant experience. But 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, I, I started playing this thing and trying to get better. I started doing the things that mandolin players do. I rented uh, lessons with a guy named Banjo Ben online, banjobin.com. <laughs> Banjo Ben became my friend. I've never met him. but. I started learning how to play slowly. I started trying to do the things that mandolin players do. I began to watch uh, videos of the greatest mandolin players, Sierra Hole and Sam Bush and Chris Thiele and all of these people who were so good. I began Im to immerse myself in the culture of the mandolin. I went to concerts that I would never have gone to before just to watch the mandolin player play. And I started to try to figure out how to play it. And eventually, that was not quite two years ago that I started, um, and eventually I got to where I could play a little better. I could maybe even sit down with a group and play a mandolin with a group and actually keep time and try to keep rhythm. Now, at the beginning of the semester, I read our verse of the year to you from Proverbs. And we've been focused on this all year. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your paths. And I, I talked about that word acknowledge, which is actually the Hebrew word yada, which is this word that means to know deeply, to know maturely, to know intimately. And so the, song, the, the writer of the, the Proverbs is saying, hey, I want, I need, you need to know on a deeper level who God is in your life if you want him to direct your paths. And so I challenge you at the beginning of the year to get to know God at a deeper level. I even had students and adults and faculty members and administration who had a intimate, real relationship with God to stand up and, and pointed you to them as perhaps a, a way that you could maybe learn to grow deeper in your faith. I gave you some suggestions that you could take and you could use, like to get to fall in love with God's word, to, to get deep into his scripture, it is his word, and to learn it and to live it and to interpret it and to just be somebody who follows scripture. I, I urge you to get connected to a Christian community. I don't know how many of you even listened to me or did that, but if you want to do the things that Christians do, you, you do the things that like connect to the community and fall in love with the scripture. The, the third thing was to serve other people, just to spend your time serving, even people who don't have a voice, people who are on the margins, people who need your help. The other thing I said is to, to talk to people who know God and, and try to figure out who God is through them. And lastly, I said to pray to God and ask him to make himself known. It's not unlike the mandolin. When, the question is, when did I become a mandolinist? Was it when I received the gift and put it in the closet? Some might think so. Didn't do me much good then. Or was it when I decided to do the things that a mandolinist did? to take the gift that was given to me and to move forward with it, to do something with it, to make an impact with it. See, I believe that it's really a metaphor for our Christian walk. We, we have this gift that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, who came and lived a perfect life and was killed and died on a cross but on the third day rose again from the grave and did that so that you could be somehow forgiven of sin, made right with God, live in relationship with him, and move into the world and build his kingdom in real and tangible ways. It's not just something that you get once and you put in the closet. It's something that you practice every day. It's something that you do on a daily basis. And the question that I have and what I want to leave this chapel with today is this. How much closer are you to knowing God in real and intimate ways today? How much closer are you than when we started? Or do you feel like you're even further away? Because here's the deal. It's on you. You are as close to God as you choose to be. You, you are. You have to choose to start practicing this thing if it's ever going to be more than just some kind of worn out religion. It's got to be real in your life if it's going to be real at all for you. And so I would urge you just to start practicing. Just play. Just be part of this grand idea called the kingdom of God and allow him to grow closer to you. Because I can promise you this, 
There is no thing better than friendship with Christ. Nothing. Nothing matches it. So, as you go this summer and do what you do, would you maybe just take a challenge and try to humble yourself and focus on what it looks like to become a real and practicing Christian and not somebody that just leaves it in the closet and on the shelf? So we're going to play a, one more song, and we're done today. Uh, and it's just an old hymn, actually. Um, and it talks about this friendship with Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus.